Hello everyone, this video is a part of an open educational resource of FDP 201X on pedagogy for online blending, teaching learning process organized by IT Bombay. This video is under the course Microwave and Radar on the topic Waveguide Tees. The team members are Sarita Varma, Kiran Khandakli and Jaya Vakuri of Marathwada Institute of Technology, Aurangabad. RC 1098-680 The contents are Objectives Need of Waveguide Tees What are Waveguide Tees? The History of Waveguide Tees Types of Waveguide Tees e plain T, H plain T, Magic T Disadvantages Applications and References The important text associated with the video are as follows. This video has been developed with the objective that after watching the video, the student should be able to identify the need of waveguides, distinguish the different types of waveguides, understand the working of each type of waveguide and list the disadvantages and applications. Why waveguides are needed? So waveguide junctions are used in microwave technologies when power in a waveguide needs to be split or some extracted. There are a number of different type of waveguide junctions. We know each has different type of property. The energy contained within the different type of waveguide is different. Hence, when selecting a waveguide junction, a balance between performance and cost needs to be done and hence a better understanding of different types of waveguides is very, very essential. A waveguide T is formed when three waveguides are interconnected in the form of an English alphabet T and thus waveguide T is nothing but a three-port junction. Waveguide T's, they are used to either branch or section of waveguide in series or in parallel with the main waveguide transmission line. This means it can be used either for splitting power or combining power in a waveguide system. Now, history of waveguide tees dates back to 1947 and it was developed by Robert Keel and Bob Dick at the same time. The different types of waveguide tees are E plain T, H plain T and Magic T. What is an E plain T? So, we can say it is nothing but in which the axis of the side arm is parallel to the electric field and of the main waveguide, whereas the collinear arms are symmetric about the side arm. How is the E plane constructed? It is formed by attaching a simple waveguide to the broader dimension of the rectangular waveguide, which already has two ports, port 1 and port 2. The arms of the rectangular waveguide, port 1 and port 2, are called collinear ports while the side arm is called the E arm and this T is also called a series T. Another name for this E plane T is a voltage or series junction T. Since we know that the side arm is parallel to the electric field, it is called a E plane T junction. The ports 1 and 2 are 180 degrees out of phase with each other. Very important point to be remembered. So, if a wave is fed into the side arm, that is the port 3, the waves appearing at port 1 and port 2 will be in opposite phase with each other and of the same magnitude. Similarly, in H plane T, this is how is the construction constructed? It is formed just by attaching a simple waveguide to a rectangular waveguide which already has two ports 1 and 2. In this the arms of the rectangular waveguide which are called the collinear ports which were earlier also called an E plane T as collinear ports that is port 1 and port 2. Whereas the port 3 is called the side arm or the H arm. The H plane T is called a shanti. Why is it called so? Here we know that the axis 
of the H plane T is shunting the electric field or parallel to the field of the main waveguide. Now, if the two input waves are fed to port 1 and port 2, the output will appear at port 3, which will be in phase and additive. Okay. So, if the input is fed into port 3, it will split and if addition is to be done, then it will be given to port 1 and port 2, output will be taken at port 3. Magic T. So, we know that why is this called a magic T? Why? Because it is a combination of both E plane T and H plane T. Whereas in this there will be four ports that is port 1 and port 2 isolated from each other. Similarly port 3 and port 4 will be isolated from each other. How is the magic T constructed? It is formed by attaching two simple waveguides, one parallel and the other in series to a rectangular waveguide. And hence, the another name for this magic T is also hybrid T. So now, we, apart from E plane T and H plane T, a magic T has four ports. So if two waves of equal magnitude and same phase are fed to port 1 and port 2, the output will be 0 at port 3 and Additive at port 4. Similarly, if a wave is fed into port 4, it will be divided equally between port 1 and port 2, that is the collinear arms, and no output will appear at port 3. If a wave is fed into port 3, it will produce an output of equal magnitude at port 1 and port 2, but it will produce zero output at port 4, since we know that port 3 and port 4 are isolated from each other. Nothing will appear if input signal is applied at port 3, no output at port 2. Similarly, if input signal is applied at port 1, there will be no output at port 2 and vice versa. If a wave is fed into one of the collinear arms, either port 1 or port 2, it will not appear in the other collinear arm. As I have already explained, because E arm causes a phase delay and we also have to remember and a H arm will cause a phase advance. To understand the magic T in a better way, we have to remember these two points. We know that when a signal is applied to a E plane arm, port uh, 1 and 2, the input will be divided between the two ports 1 and 2, but will be 180 degrees out of phase. Similarly, inje a signal injected into the H plane port, this will be divided equally between the two ports 1 and 2, but it will in be in phase. The disadvantages are, one of the disadvantages of magic T is that it suffers from reflections due to impedance mismatching that occur naturally within it. Similarly, these reflections can give rise to power laws and they can be reduced by using different matching techniques. These are a few applications of magic T. It can be used for impedance matching as a balance mixer in microwave receiver. Also, it can be used as a power combiner and in a duplex circuit. Before concluding, I would request you to just solve this small quiz. E plane T is called Yes, a series T, whereas an H plane T is called a shunt T. A T junction power divider can be used for division of power. Is it true or false? False, because it can be used as a combiner as well as a divider. And a magic T is nothing but a combination of two different types of T, E plane T and H plane T. These are the few references. Thank you.